Hey, welcome back guys. About to fire up some trucks, get things rounded up so we can start seeding some peas again today. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Hopefully we'll get a lot done. But first, today's video is brought to you by Sunday Lawn Care. We'll talk about that soon. So let's go start some trucks. interesting I smell skunk here huh almost like someone transplanted a skunk in this area first up check the engine oil then get the tractor started and warmed up because uh, it needs to warm a while get the oil warmed up the hydraulics the engine oils the coolants all that good stuff before you start laying in anything because with a tractor it's uh start and then go full throttle so you kind of want to make sure you work into it because you're not going to see it at half throttle. You got to crank her up just like a combine. She's going to be rapping. So get her warmed up. I know that engine's an oily mess. We'll figure that out. We'll get her fixed. Start it. <laughs> this year how I'd be seeding into this uh, stubble from last year because if you guys remember weed apocalypse from last year we had an absolute nightmare of kochia and Russian thistle and all kinds of weeds growing anyways that residue is still here we did harvest a lot of it but there's still quite a bit of residue and it's uh, pulling through real easy I haven't really had much bunch ups at all partially that's because this is a 12 inch spacing toolbar not nine so we're, there's more gaps between each shake, which allows a little more room for the material to flow around instead of getting bunched up. Another thing about 12 inch spacing, I have a lot of people have asked, does this toolbar pull harder than the other one? Being that it's 13 feet longer. Uh, no, it actually pulls about the same, if not maybe easier. The reason is, believe it or not, our 57 foot were nine inch spacing. There were 77 shanks on that thing. This is a 70 foot with 12 inch spacing, which means there's 70 shanks. So technically we have seven less shanks, which are not digging dirt on this one than compared to the other ones. And that attributes to less drag, which means less work for the big bud. Now, pros and cons of spacing, the same seed rate is going down. It just means more seed is going to 70 shanks instead of 77 which isn't a big deal. We're gonna try it. We've been nine inch spacing for years. We're kind of switching over to 12 inch just because of the types of crops are growing these days, like peas. I think they like a little wider and it's just a little easier to get a little wider width without extra, needing extra horsepower. So that's kind of a small explanation. Ruling's out though, we'll know. A lot of guys run 12 inch, so it obviously works, but yeah, it pulls pretty easy. It's really nice. We, we need two. It'd be really nice. That'd be really, really nice. Wheel slip check. No slip. You know, the life of a big butt owner is, uh, it's a good life. But man, you gotta keep keep working on them. You gotta keep working on them. There's some things about them that just, which were a little bit better. Like the throttle. This is an air throttle. He uses air pressure to drive an actuator down by the 
engine injection pump and it throws an arm back and forth to rev up the engine or decelerate it. And so what happens, or derate it, what happens is the air lever is not that accurate. So if I just barely, barely, barely move it, I'll jump like 500 RPM. Like right now I'm doing about, what is that, 1750 RPM? Going about 4.8, 4.9 miles an hour. Let's say I want to go a little faster. So I just tapped it, just barely. 1900 RPM, 5.3 miles an hour. So if I bring it back a little bit, like that, it'll now slowly keep going down to about 1600 RPM, which then dropped me down about 4.4 miles an hour. So I guess what I'm getting at is it's all over the map. That may seem like it, but see it's dropping down right now. So then I gotta tap it just barely, try to get it back to that 1800 RPM. Oh, no, nope, we're back to 1900. And now it's slowly going back down again. So with that said, mechanical linkage is a lot better for throttle. It's just the convenience of this, being able to lift the cab up, they put an air throttle on here because, well, it makes sense. When you're summer falling, it's not a big deal. Your speed isn't as important. Seating, I kind of like to keep that speed. And my air conditioner's broke. I need a new air conditioning pump. It, uh, it's not working. So, it's hot here. Check out this uh, sweet find that I found finding near the found field. Look at that beauty. Coca-Cola! Except the label is like just about toast, but that's an old bottle right there. I don't know vintage on it, but I would say probably 60s or 70s, maybe earlier than that. I don't know, you guys guess. What do you think the vintage is on this Coca-Cola bottle? Can you see the old label? How old is that? Am I way off? Was this only 32 ounces, one quart? That's a lot of Coca-Cola. Coke! It says Coca-Cola on one side, Coke on the other. Uh, return for deposit. Okay, well, they did that money back bottle. Okay, maybe it's not that old. Maybe it's, maybe it's there's still stuff in there. Should I drink it? <laughs> I don't know. You guess, how old's the thing? Oh, there she went. Right, I'm gonna shut her off. I hate, I hate, I hate turning it off when it's hot. Tell no, the flames are. Yeah, well, you can turn it back on. Was so there, we get this out of here. Was there already flames on it? Okay, I'll fire her back up. <laughs> Air conditioning pump seized. It, it's toast. All right, so here's what we got going on. All kinds of goodies. Uh, we're both pretty much out of seed. I need seed. My dad needs seed. But. We are going to try some granular inoculant. Cause we don't do that on the farm. We've just done peat. And so we had the opportunity to try some granular. So to get the granular though into our cart, we have to use the crane. And the problem is we got to get a new meter roller in the cart to use the granular because it's an extra fine roller, not just a fine that we use for our peat. So they're cleaning out right now the hopper on there so they can drop the manifold, put a fine meter roller in there. And I need diesel, so I pulled up next to the service truck here. And I'm gonna hope the hose is long enough to stretch across here because I don't have room on this side. So I'll pump some diesel in that while they're doing that. And then we'll get this granular in. So this is Lollaman granular inoculant. And the advantages of granular are, well, it's easier to handle than peat. It's not those dirty bags. You can put it in your drill and meter it out, unlike peat, which you can't. And on top of that, they say it's better for the furrow placement because being the granular spread out throughout the furrow, not just on the seed, when the roots get there, they nodulate more uh, spread out instead of just a big ball mass around the root. So we'll give her a shot, see how it goes. It's gonna be interesting to do a comparison to see if peat and granular makes you know difference. But uh, yeah, so we'll give her a shot, put her in. Oh yeah, and earlier. <laughs> Compressor belt. Yeah, the compressor stalled out. It's it's seed. That's okay, we'll get a new one on it. But that was definitely the squealing sound I was hearing. And we'll need a new belt too.
And some of you are probably going, well, why are you putting it in like that? Why don't you just auger it in? Well, we're not in our yard and uh, the service truck with the crane is the easiest thing to get out to the field and it lifts high. So this just makes the most sense. There's the granular. All right. That's nice though. <laughs> no powder inoculant. I'm sure it's all over my face. This gets everywhere. That's one advantage of granular. The disadvantage of granular is you gotta have a decent cart set up for it. Ours isn't really set up very well for it. A lot of the bigger carts, air carts, have an actual saddle tank a little tank for canola and for like granular products that's down low on the side and so you can just dump it right in there pretty easy but for us it's a little more challenging but it's worth a shot and try it why not that's full enough shut her down it expands when it gets warm and if you're side hilling it can ease out no we don't want to do that we don't want to ease it out there we go wrap that bad boy up let's take a look at the map show you guys what we're doing here. So that's what we got seated so far with this rig. My dad's rig seen as well. And we are just about done with peas. Uh, tomorrow, we'll finish tomorrow. So I'm gonna wing this thing up and let's, uh, let's do some road and take it to the next field. It's about five miles from here. We'll get there. I think we're gonna call it about 10 o'clock getting dark and we'll finish the piece tomorrow so there's no like hard push no weather coming we're ahead of the game it's good to get these acres knocked out though i got about 1200 of this drill so far so it's doing okay well let's uh start it tomorrow see you then you know as a farmer my livelihood is based off of plants i need to know the plants i need to love the plants i need to give them what they want and what they need all the time unfortunately i tend to neglect my plants at home my lawn it's a sort of a mess but there's something i can do about it i'm gonna try it out this is a lawn care subscription from sunday pretty neat how this works so they use soil sampling satellite imagery as well as your climate on your location to determine what is best for your lawn and then you send them a little packet here with your soil sample throughout your yard send it to them they'll analyze it and determine what nutrients your yard is lacking and then they'll send you in the mail at certain times pouches that then you applicate real easy takes a lot of stress out of what your heart is lacking. Uh, as a farmer, we put a lot of stuff into our fields to make them grow, and it can be tricky to know what exactly it is you need. What's nice about this is Sunday takes care of that for you. So it's a really simple process. You submit your address to them, figure out your plan within a matter of seconds, they ship it right to your door. Then you just take these nozzles, hook it up to your garden hose, spray the pouches that have been determined for the best nutrient package for your, your yard, your lawn, and then repeat the process again when they send you another bunch in the mail a couple weeks later throughout the whole year. It's an easy way to keep your lawn nice and green. Well, hopefully we see some improvements. I'm a little ashamed with this lawn, so I'm looking forward to some green. Yes, I'm gonna have to add some H2O on it as well. We definitely need some water. This area is lacking in that. But I can provide that here at least, not in the fields, but here. So there, we'll see how this works. I'm excited to try it out, but it's time to get back to the farming side of things. So. If you guys are interested in it though, go to uh, getsunday.com slash Welker Farms and use promo code Welker20, Welker20 to get 20% off your order. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of things inside the shop for a little bit and then get up to the field. Let's go. Well, that's interesting. Can't get it out of gear. So it's in a high gear. So I had to put it in four low to try to get the ratios down enough so I could not slip the clutch too bad to get it moving. I guess I'm only two miles from the farmyard, so we'll get it back. But <laughs> farm pickups. Love them. Well, I put the shifter back in and um, <laughs> it works, but it doesn't shift. When I say it works, I mean I'm in a gear, I don't know which one probably third 
and I couldn't go forward because it would just slip the clutch really bad if I tried to start off. So I actually had to put it for low so that it was geared down enough to start moving without slipping the clutch, but now I can only go 20 miles an hour with it almost red line. She's a good truck. girl every time except for the beginning of the year in the shop then it's not every time but once it's running it's good i always let the tractor warm up for a while turn the fan on so the hydraulics have a chance to warm up get some oil moving but my intelligent egg monitor was showing me some discrepancies throughout the headers on here so i want to take a look at each one i have a feeling i know what i'm gonna find yep i'll show you so, you can thank flying rats for that one. Those are pigeons. And the pigeons uh, found uh, our seed bin with these uh, terrible winds we've been having, blew the lid off, and they nested inside there. So as we've been pulling seed out, all the nests that they made, the straw they brought in, is going through this now. That's why we clean our peas, clean our seed before we seed it so stuff like that doesn't happen. Well, that blocks peas from running all the runs and creates irregularities into your seeding rate. So I'll run down this thing. There's seven of them. It's not too bad to pull straw out. Eventually we'll get through it. Birds! Gotta love them. There. Okay. She's good to go. Let's go plant some peas. We're gonna finish peas today. I'm excited. Hopefully I have enough seed in this tank to do this field and that field there. Dad's finished up his on the other side about two miles that way. And uh, we'll pull everything back in the yard today to start the process of getting them turned over to see some grain. But we got things we got to do. The air conditioning obviously isn't working on that. There's some modifications I need to make on the back of the drill. I'll show you guys that when we get there. And then we got to get the five and a quarter KTA 525 hooked up to that 85 foot Mandeco Land Roller, which we're demoing. Pretty amazing unit. It's a little bit bigger than our 50 foot Mandeco that we own. So that'll be fun to run. We'll get uh, Wiggles, the Wiggly Wagster Brad, to uh, start uh, rolling our bees. And then I gotta get the sprayer lined up. So yeah, we got a lot of work ahead of us. There's also agreement being built and uh, all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> busy. Okay, I just went on to the next field and uh, something special about this field. Some of you guys uh, have heard before, but might be some new ones that uh, are riding along. Um, I'm actually on this field that's the original homestead for Welker. Uh, when my uh, grandfather came from Oklahoma back in 1912, homesteaded this piece of ground here was 320 acres. And the piece I'm on is about 50 acres and it's the oldest piece that's been in production uh, on our farm, about 110 years. Um, and it's shown its age uh, with the, the, the type of farming that we had to do before we got uh, Roundup, uh, Glyphosate. then we were able to chem follow, then it was put in the CRP for a few years. So it's, ha it's got some of the organic matter back, but it's still, it's still got a ways to go. But I'm gonna show you here the homestead. That's the, an outhouse, a two-seater. Two That's a two-hole outhouse. Uh, it's blown over. There's the original homestead building. It was actually probably a couple shacks because uh, there was homesteaders all over the 320 and then a lot of them didn't make it so they left. Uh, there's the barn that collapsed. There's the fence line and uh, he had a lot of sheep. He grew sheep in this country because they could eat the short grass. Um, and of course, what a condition. Uh, just, over the, just over this uh, area right there, there's a little reservoir, and the interesting thing about that reservoir, a uh, little pond that they made, is that it pretty much always had water. And the reason why is if you can look, you can see some of this kind of black land. That's old ancient seabed that's fairly sterile. Um, it won't grow anything. This is kind of what they call, we call it a shale outcropping, but it's an old seabed floor that's outcropping on this area. So there's, there's very little topsoil. 
are very shallow and uh, but it acts like a tin and it will run all the water off because it's clay based uh, it'll run it down in the reservoir so in every little shower that comes by runs a little water adds water to it so they were able to keep animals hydrated here uh, here's some more piece of old equipment that was no doubt a binder right there uh, that was probably a hay wagon anyway but yeah this is uh, the oldest piece of ground that we have uh, it's uh, uh, about uh, it was on three 320 acres here uh, then uh, then my uh, uh, great uncle who was up here that came up actually first before my grandfather he uh, decided that this wasn't his country and he went back to Oklahoma he leased the ground to my grandfather and then my grandfather bought it after the five years were up and uh, he ended up with 640 but actually if you look across here you notice there's not farmland in this area the reason why there's not farmland uh, is because it's just not very good soil uh, so they kept it as pasture but this one hillside that uh, I'm seeding right now uh, has been uh, uh, you know had, it had better soils on this east slope so just a little trivia for those who uh, want to know where my roots are they're right here this is uh, the home place we call the homestead and it's a uh, uh, it, it's a uh, kind of unusual ground uh, because of that shale outcropping but it's poor soils around it but my grandfather stayed so that shows great determination through a lot of odds to uh, make a go of it and now I'm third generation the boys are fourth generation and uh, it's just amazing how far we've come I'm on the last field of the yellow peas I'm on the last tank and I'm going real slow because I don't want it to meter super fast to get the rate down. But the bottom line is, I'm trying to seed up this last tag, clean this tractor completely out, take it back. I'll start the process of fixing things, getting it set up for wheat. Well, my dad comes in here and finishes the deal that he has left in his spring, his seeder. Make sense? Nick was complaining about the AC not working in the 600 Bud. Why? Why are you complaining, first of all? That's the question I want to know. Second of all, why did you destroy the belt? Yeah, got to get a new one of those. And the other question I have is why did you break it? I'd say yeah, that's, it's basically junk. Okay, we'll get a new one. This is an old style air AC compressor pump on the bud and this, we're gonna upgrade it to a new style. So I think I found one at the parts store. Well, I think they found one. It'll be in the morning. Once it gets here, I'll have to build a new bracket to mount on the side of the engine and then we'll figure out a new belt length because it probably won't be the same. But anyways, I had, for curiosity's sake, I had to crack this open just to see what's wrong. A lot. It's absolutely amazing to me. And I just want you guys to know something. My brother and my dad are incredibly hard workers. Incredibly hard workers. And they do so much that it, uh, I'm very proud, let's put it that way, I'm very proud to be related to them and to work alongside them. Family means a lot. I'm gonna get all emotional thinking about it. Not anymore because Nick broke it, but anyways, that, that, we'll, we'll talk about that later, so. Just wanted you guys to know, they're very hard workers and they deserve the praise. Nick's out with a five and a quarter bud, driving around, making sure the auto steer works just fine and it looks like it's going in a straight line, so good news.